so far, what's the big deal? I can find out this area, I can do it exactly using integration. But my point is, if I gave you some other weird gross function, and there's lots out there, um, we won't be able to use this process of integration. So now I'm gonna show you how to approximate the area, and we're gonna use our exact area to make a comparison and see if, is it a good approximation, or can we do something better, okay? so. The idea here is I take this shape, this red area underneath the curve, and I'm going to approximate this shape using a trapezium, right? The way I'm going to do it is if I take this top point above x equals 1 and this top point above x equals 0, if I just join them with a straight line across the top, then what you're going to create is something like the area that you want, not exactly, but pretty close. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to borrow this trapezium that I've already drawn up in the top corner. I'm going to drag this one down and like I said I'm going to draw a line right across the top and then I'm going to put everything else in the appropriate spots like so. Okay, so let's just zoom in and see what I've done. I have created a trapezium, which I know is not exactly equal to the area, but it'll be pretty close, right? Um, it'll certainly do a better job than those rectangles before because um, I've, I've only got this little sliver in here. I'm just going to highlight it in another color. This little sliver in here will be the difference. Okay, so I've highlighted that in yellow. I know that my area is not going to be exact, but it will still be pretty close. Now my question is, how do I work out the area of this purple trapezium? Well, think back. Um, the area of a trapezium, this formula is one that you haven't encountered for a while. Why do I have airplane mode and Wi-Fi on? Yeah, I don't know why I've done that. Anyway, that's okay. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to be trying to uh, work out using this formula, area equals h on 2, a plus B. I'm going to be using this formula which is the area formula for a, um, a trapezium and I'm going to use that to uh, evaluate the area of this purple trapezium. Okay, thank you Mrs. Lees. Now, um, before I use this formula, okay, I need to remember what the different pieces of are because you probably haven't dealt with trapeziums for a while now, right? So, for starters, uh, let's start with purple here. Okay, what does H mean in a trapezium? Well, if I go back up the top, let's just use this trapezium that I um, drew around the title. H, like the name suggests, is the perpendicular height, right? So that's going to be, uh, let's draw it across here. This is the perpendicular height. So it's not like the leaning over, it's not one of these lengths here. These are not the height, okay? The height has to be straight up and down, okay? So that's why I've got this line over here on the right hand side. This is the height. Does anyone remember, what are A and B? In this formula here for the area of a trapezium, can anyone tell me what the A and the B actually signify? Anyone want to go ahead and type it in the chat? Top and bottom, I'll take that, yeah, sure. Um, the short and the long side, okay? So all of these, I think I know what you're talking about. You're referring to this side here, up the top, and then this side here, down the bottom. Now, um, I see, Sasha, you've said the short and the long side, so I think you mean that's the shorter one and that's the longer one. Now, <laughs> Ellie, you've gone base and hypotenuse thing, I'm guessing, okay, so. You're all on the right track, but I'm going to um, say it slightly differently for you because um, the ways that you said it um, are slightly dangerous, or dangerous is an exaggeration. Um, they're likely to give you the wrong answer if you interpret things incorrectly. Here's what I mean, okay? When we say top and bottom, right, um, the top happens to be on this side and this happens to be the bottom, right? But the actual thing that I need about these two sides is that they're the parallel sides. Now we tend to draw trapeziums so the parallel sides are on the top and the bottom, but they're not always as you're about to see with this trapezium we're really dealing with, okay? So as Joanna has said, what we really want A and B to be are the two parallel sides. This is our A, we usually denote that as the shorter one, if there is a shorter one, uh, and then this is our B. So when we say H, we mean perpendicular height, and then when we say A and B, we mean the parallel sides. And that's really, really important. Now, what I'm going to do here, and you'll see why this is, in, is going to be useful later, is I'm not going to call them A and B anymore. I'm about to um, get rid of them, and I'm going to erase them and replace them with something else. The reason being, when we look at integral calculus, we tend to use A and B for other things. We tend to use them for boundaries. Um, so I'm going to stop using A and B now. I'm going to get rid of them. Instead of A and B, and you'll see why I do this in about 60 seconds, I'm going to replace them with two different names. I'm going to call them Y1 
and why two? That might sound a bit weird. Where does this come from? Well, maybe if you're thinking ahead, um, you'll be able to predict why. So let's see here. I've got y1 and y2. All right, so what do we need? We need, for this new trapezium that I've drawn here, we need to know its perpendicular height, and then we need to know these two parallel sides. All right, look closely. Now let's start with the parallel sides. I think they're easier to identify. What are the parallel sides in this trapezium going to be? Because I haven't marked them in. Have a think. Yes, Sarang, we'll happily help you with those questions after the lesson's done. Can anyone tell me which sides they will be? What direction are these parallel sides going in? Yeah, fantastic. I'll take that. Hamza, thank you, Parent. Well done. So it's, it's this side here and uh, this side over here, these up and down, I guess the vertical sides, right? So Yana and Tashi have said it uh, a more, a more, let's see, it's not accurate, but it is a, a more descriptive way of saying it. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's mark these two sides in as our parallel sides. So this one is quite short and this one's a bit longer here. Okay. So now maybe you're starting to get a sense of why I've called these Y1 and Y2. Uh, wh where are these coming from? Well, they're coming from vertical lengths. Um, in my trapezium, these are going to be going up and down, so they're Y values. The length of these will be Y values. So I'm going to call this one Y1, and I'm going to call the other one Y2. All right? Now, once you've got that, hopefully this tells you um, you're now going to have to look at this trapezium sideways. So this is why top and bottom is not the best way to describe Y1 and Y2. It's about them being parallel. Okay. So now the only other question is, um, if I've got Y1 and I've got Y2, what's H? Where is H on this diagram? Can anyone tell me where H is going to be found? How do I calculate it? All right, Abby's got the number. Well done. Um, yeah, so it's the baseline. Excellent. Along the x-axis, perfect. You guys are on the money, okay? So I'm going to draw across here, a set of arrows here. So it's a bit weird because we usually think of height as an up or down thing, right? But it's a perpendicular height. It's perpendicular to the parallel sides of this trapezium. So you can see there's a right angle here, okay? So since it's a perpendicular there to the parallel sides, that's what makes this the perpendicular height. So I'm going to call this H. So now I know what H is, I know what Y1 is, and I know what Y2 is, or I should say, I know where they are, but I actually don't know what any of these are equal to, right? I don't know any of their values. So we can go ahead and work out what each of these is. And let's do it in reverse order because H is kind of screaming out at us, and I think some people actually already said what the answer is. Yes, yeah, Sasha, you said three take away one, and I think Abby, you went straight to saying it was two. So what are we doing here? And um, please remember this, we've got the, uh, the top boundary here, the upper boundary, and to get two, we subtract this lower boundary, right? So I am going to go ahead and write like Sasha has. This is three take away one, which is two, okay? So if I've got my height, now I've got to deal with my parallel sides, my y1 and my y2. How do I find out what these are equal to? How do I get these vertical lengths? Because they're not written anywhere onto my, uh, onto my graph. Uh, let's just start with Y1. How do I work out Y1? Okay, I am going to do some substitution. Okay, Abby's on fire today, all right? What am I going to substitute and what am I going to substitute into? Can anyone tell me? Um, let's start with the X value. What X value am I going to substitute in? Okay, so if I take three, um, that's this upper boundary over here. So if I substitute three into my function y equals x squared, I'm going to get this length, right? So if I substitute y into x squared, I'm getting three squared. So that's going to be nine. Are you happy with that? I'm going to go over. We skipped y1. We did y2 first, okay? So because it's vertically above x equals one, I'm going to substitute in um, x equals 1. So I should say that's going to be 1 squared, which equals 1. I actually really, to be accurate, I should call that 3 squared so you know where it comes from. And that's equal to 9. All right. So now I've got all my pieces. I've got my h, I've got my y1, I've got my y2. I'm ready to go. So now I'm going to say, uh, I'll do this in purple since I've been doing this um, trapezium in purple. I'm not going to say the area equals because I already know right from the outset that this is not going to be exactly the area. It's just approximately close to it, right? So I'm going to say instead of area equals, I'm going to say area is approximately equal. So I'm using these wavy equal signs. This is not the only way you can write it. Um, some of you might have seen 
and equals signs with um, dots above and below it. Um, you can do it that way if you prefer. Um, my problem with that is that when I'm in an exam and I'm writing with a pen and I'm doing it fast, um, my dots tend to be very hard to see because um, sometimes my pen's a bit dead or something like that. So if you can't see them, then it looks just like an equals sign, whereas it's much harder to uh, mistake these uh, wiggly lines here. So. What am I saying? The area is approximately equal to, and now I'm going to use my area of a trapezium formula. Like so. I've got my H, I've got my Y1, I've got my Y2, let's substitute them in. Okay. Uh, in fact, I'm even going to uh, connect them over here. So let's go, here's my H, which is going to go here. Here's my Y, whoopsie daisy, didn't want to drag that with me. Here's my Y1, which I'm going to drag here. And then lastly, here's my Y2, which is going to end up over here. So, ready to substitute, maybe you've already done it. Um, I'm getting approximately equal to uh, 2 over 2, and then I've got 1 plus 9. 2 over 2, of course, is 1, so I'm just getting 10. And this, of course, is in units squared. Now, let's have a look at this, okay? This is an approximation, Jana, as you said. Um, I guess if what we had was a straight line, you would get exactly the area because the uh, trapezium would be exactly equal to your function. But most of the functions we're dealing with are, are curvy and weird, okay? Um, especially those more challenging ones above. So yes, this will always give you an approximation.